So ever since Apple announced the Vision Pro mixed reality headset, people have been talking about how to design for it, how to design for that augmented mixed reality experience. And one thing lots of designers over on Design Twitter have been recommending is using a software called Bezel. Bezel is kind of like Figma in that it's browser-based, it's fully collaborative, but it's for making 3D objects and 3D prototypes. I listed Bezel as one of the new design tools to watch, along with Rive and Play, but I personally still haven't had a proper chance to play around with it. So in today's video, I'm gonna be making a set of objects using Bezel just to try and see how I find using the software. And before we get started, a disclaimer, I'm not brand new to using 3D software. When I was a lot younger, I got really into using Autodesk Maya. It was back when I wanted to work in CGI. And I've also used SketchUp and Cinema 4D, which now comes bundled with Adobe Creative Cloud. So I've got a little bit of experience, so don't watch this as if I'm a total beginner to 3D polygonal modeling. What I've never used though is Bezel's specific set of polygon modeling tools. So I don't know if it's parametric, I don't know if you can like pull and push vertices, we're just gonna have a go and see how it turns out. So I've opened up a new file. So this is the first object and I'm trying a few different ways of making the inside bit extruded and going down. I can't seem to grab just those faces on the top and extrude them down, which is kind of what I expected to do. But what is really cool is I quite like this way of finding tools. If you just start typing, it appears and you can hit spacebar to select the tool. So that's quite nice. Um, and yeah, I think double clicking gets me into editing mode and then I can hold shift and drag a box. So got my face selection working well, still working. Maybe it's with loop cuts. Still working out on how to extrude stuff. So I've got my mug working now. And I've just got one vertex, which I've got to push way down into it. And it's quite nice seeing the little preview in the top left corner. So I know where things are going. Great, so that's like a little cup. Let's put on a, maybe I could do it with a small cylinder. Okay, I'm trying to work out how I'm gonna do the handle. I can't use like a warp modifier or bend it. How else could I do it? So I can't find a torus or a way to like use a bend modifier on a cylinder, but I think I can probably create a, like a curve using just a line object. So that's made that flat on the canvas, which is fine. But it's nice that I can just go and edit that arc. Let's see if I can create a, don't judge my Bezier curve skills here. So let's grab a cylinder now and just make it really small over here. That little lag is not the one, is it? And now let's see if I can combine these or extrude along the face of it. Hmm. Ah, found it. So I was trying to like extrude or loft along a curve using a primitive and I've just realized from the 3D curve, you can just change it straight to being a pipe. So that should basically be it. If I just rotate that to 90, bring it in line with our mug, do a little shifting. What's cool is that even though this mug handle looks terrible, the line it's made of is still editable. So I can go in, I can move these points around, shift that one up, and then just whack out these Bezier curves. So it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> But if I increase the radius there, I've got a very rudimentary, wonky handled looking mug. Just have to ignore that the handle goes into the mug up there. But pretty happy with that for the first object. Cool, so next let's do a plate. I'm gonna start with a cylinder again. And now we know about using our loop cut tool, we can just very quickly... You know what would be great if we could double click and or hold shift and double click there to like select the edge loop. What instead I can do is if I could do one outside, bring that up and scale it out. That's not worked. Okay, let's try instead. And grab that vertex. I love this little inspector thing here. I think it's so useful. So you can keep your 3D view as well as your um, kind of inspector view. 
So that's kind of a nice play. What we can do is give it another edge loop here, and then I think holding one of command and shift is expanding that in all directions. So give it a bit more of a rim, and then what we could do is another cylinder. What I'm finding with bezel is that it doesn't have every single tool and feature. I know that they are continually dropping in new feature releases, but here we're just really roughly modeling stuff anyway, so it doesn't matter hugely. Okay, cylinder three, cylinder two, shift select, lean, union. And now we've just got one plate object. We'll bring it above the origin point. There you go, so that's our plate. So the third object on my list is gonna be a water carafe. So something like this. Again, mostly cylinder based. Should be quite quick. Let's give it a go. So I'm gonna do a similar thing to the mug to start off with, where we do a loop cut on the top and then send that right down. And grab the vertex, send it down. So the inside geometry of this craft isn't correct because that inner tube goes straight down. I'm not going to worry about that too much for now. What I do want to work out is if I can smooth these or chamfer bezel. It's funny that bezel doesn't have a bezel tool. Edit. Uh... Nope, not sure it is going to be that easy. Let's just leave that for now. I, I'm kind of curious about like subdivision. Ah, here we go. Subdivisions. So subdivisions is kind of what I want, because now if I add on an edge loop down here and another one on this rim, it's going to give me nice sharp edges. So you can see it's kind of got some weird smoothing patterns going on. But by having subdivisions turned on to one, it gives me a much better kind of smoother geometry, which is a bit more realistic, a bit closer to my actual carafe. But yeah, some weird artifacting going on here. Not sure about that. Deal with that later. So that was the carafe. Object number four is a lamp, and actually I was gonna do a rice paper Noguchi-esque lamp, which again is a cylinder. I guess I picked just very cylindrical objects. Uh, let's make it about that tall. This one, I'm gonna go ham with the edge loops. I'm just gonna select every other ring. And give it this nice zigzag effect. And then I'm just going to grab that top vertex, bring it way up, and give it a bit of a flat top. And then just whack that subdivisions up. Oh, I did not mean to do 10. I've probably broken it now. Yep, page unresponsive. Give that a refresh. Obviously, it's broken on the back. Deal with that later. Next, let's do a laptop. So finally, something which isn't cylinder based. This is the most rudimentary form of it. We're not going to bother with a keyboard. I'm just going to chuck it in. I guess that's a laptop. Like, if you show that to a person and said, what object is that meant to represent? It would be a laptop. So very simple. I guess let's give it a bit more detail if I do. Inset is the tool I think I was thinking of when I was trying to bezel something earlier. So if I just give that a tiny inset, then grab that face and extrude it just the tiniest bit in, probably not that much. There we are, bring that up so we've got the bottom bezel. Yeah, I think most people would agree that that is a laptop. So yeah, I might just call that one done. And those are the easy objects that I want to model. I'm back, I've got an iced coffee and we're gonna have a go at making the other objects. So starting with the watch, which in its simplest form is just a very long box and a cylinder placed in the middle. Now what I want to try doing is a bit more vertex kind of pushing and pulling. So I'm just going to add an edge loop there to give myself a bit of geometry to work with. And then using vertex selection, just grab those four and bring them up. 
One thing I'm not a huge fan of is how this kind of live preview doesn't update until you're done. So when you let go, you can see how the geometry moves, but until then, it shows that ghost effect, which makes it a little hard to see what you're doing. And I think is a bit different to other 3D software I've used. But that's quite a nice watch strap. We can do maybe on the other side, what we could do is just add a bit more geometry generally, just using that edge loop tool. Go back into edit mode. The other thing is, I think it's not selecting stuff unless it's in the viewport. So you don't have a select through layers, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, I'm sure there's probably an option to turn that on or off somewhere. One thing I will say about Bezel is that the, the team building it are super active on the Discord. And if you start typing a feature which doesn't exist, you can send feedback direct to them. And they actually do get back to you very quickly by email. So really, really cool. Good team building a very interesting product. So maybe let's just squeeze that watch down a bit so the strap looks kind of decent. And then I'm going to put in the holes. I might not do the whole buckle. So the way I'm going to do the holes is by using booleans. So if I grab all of those and then do union, shift that whole object down so it intersects with the strap, and then do subtract. I think I'm going to leave the watch for now. Great, what's next on the list? A mocha pot. Let's quickly remind myself what a mocha pot looks like. Yeah, so that's the top of the mocha pot. Let's go for a, another cylinder. I move all of those whoop, out the way, and then just set both of those to zero, zero. And then push that one up. Uh, focus view. And now we know that because we're on the origin, they will both be centered. Um, quite happy with this. It's this angle here, which I think is going to be tricky. So how should we do that? So I think that angle of the spout is going to be quite tricky, but what I think I'm going to do is just do it as a box and then push and pull vertices until it feels right. I think grabbing multiple vertices and scaling them together is actually such a good way of working. It's quite intuitive and it means that you can just move things together really easily. Let's bring this into place and see how it looks. The reason I did this top bit is because I think on the top, when you look at a mocha pot top down, you'll see that it's kind of got this diagonal bit here. But I'm not loving it. I think for the sake of time, I might have to leave this spout here, but I'm not super happy with it, to be honest. <laughs> not, not the best piece of 3D modeling I've done. And then got to do a little handle and a little gasket. So you know what, let's do the line handle again. I do really like this. I like how you can fix um, like do Bezier curves with a, with a 3D object really easily. I'm sure because I'm... Oh no, it's pretty straight. Let's keep it over there. I think that bit hasn't been filled in, but caps, flat, there we go. So, <laughs> let's zoom back out. So yeah, quite happy with that as a little mocha pot. Let's group that together, whack it off to the side. Also, we should group this together. So this has been really fun. I've made a bunch of objects in Bezel, a new browser-based 3D design tool. Obviously, I haven't got to try out the things which make Bezel very different to other 3D software. I've just been focusing on polygonal modeling. But of course, Bezel is great for putting things into an AR headset without needing to open Unity. It's great for collaborative design, so I could send this link to someone else and they could jump into the file and start designing with me. So I'm going to try out some of those features in a future video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to get a copy of this file, I'll leave a link in the description. Go try out Bezel. It's a really cool piece of software. And if you want to see more videos like this, just let me know. And I will make more like this. If you did enjoy this video, please do hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.